Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. Has some very interesting news coming out uh, uh, today out of Pyongyang, uh, North Korea. And uh, it's a little interesting. Kim Jong un uh, from North Korea ready to confront any war, including a nuclear conflict. You know, it's kind of funny. You look at the picture of this young man. Looks like he just came out of a uh, video game room all day or something like that and then coming out to play soldier. But yet, uh, he is to be taken very serious. He follows in his father's footsteps. He's very, uh, uh, very blunt, very cruel, and uh, is ready to strike any war that he so desires. And especially when you're young like that, there's no telling what you might, ex what could be expected from him. Uh, in, in their war games that they were practicing, it says here on the TASS Russian news agency that uh, Kim Jong Un. Uh, was commanded uh, com was in command of drills held by military formations of the Air Force Navy from the Korean People's Army. Local papers reported on Sunday the North Korean leader noted that the country is ready to fight any war, including a nuclear one. War games focused on drills of a surprise strike by the Air Force and Navy, including submarines on aircraft carrier of an, uh, an imaginary enemy. If a warship appears on the operational direction of the uh, Korean People's Army, North Korean military forces should stage uh, intensive military exercise seeking to destroy any... Uh, excuse me, to, to destroy an imaginary aircraft carrier strike grouping of aggressive forces of American imperialists. To sink a U.S. aircraft carrier down to the sea bottom is quite probable, uh, papers quoted Kim as saying. The North Korean leader who heads the country's armed forces in the rank of marshal was accompanied by a large group of military commanders at the drills. The area of military exercise was not specified. Now, I'm bringing some of these uh, stories here to your attention. Of course, this is d definitely a headline news there, but uh, some of the next ones I'm going to speak about, or the next story we're going to speak about is about uh, the Russian troops to be reinforced for st uh, their strategic areas, uh, according to the defense minister there. And uh, this, uh, again, is another story uh, out of Russia, and it, it's very important to bring this out. It says, uh, Russian state armaments program must take into account the situation in economy. Uh, this is according to uh, Vladimir Putin, said troops will be reinforced in strategic areas as the defense minister's plan for 2015 is corrected to increase the combat potential of armed forces in connection with military and, po and political situation around Russia, Defense Minister Sergei uh, Soyhug told a mi uh, ministry board meeting on Friday. Corrections were made to the plans for the armament and equipment of the armed forces and construction of military towns and facilities, the minister says. Soigu uh, said the chief of the main operational department, deputy chief of the general staff, Andrei Kartop Kartopolov, would report to the meeting about specific plan corrections and, and formation of forces in strategic areas. Now, before I kind of go into what's on my mind about these particular stories here, I want to back up to a story that I, that I, that I first picked up on uh, today when we were researching the different news and before coming on the broadcast here. And this was a, an article on Israel National News from IDF Chief of Staff uh, Gantz. And in, uh, the entire Middle East is upside down is the, the title of this particular article. And the IDF Chief of Staff, Benny Gantz, said Sunday that Israel could not afford to let the Northern Front get too active. We cannot allow the front to heat up too much with terror attacks launched against us. That's what uh, the Chief, uh, Chief Gantz said here. The instability in Lebanon, he said, was a good example of how the old order in the Middle East was being eroded. And it is not clear what will replace it. Speaking at a memorial service for former IDF Chief of Staff Amon Lipkin Shahak, who passed away four years ago, Gantz said, We are currently at what could be called a historical junction. There is a wide chasm between the way the Western countries split up this region 100 years ago through various agreements, mostly for their own convenience, and the reality of today. Of course, he's talking about back when. Britain had actually given much more land to Israel that was going to be given to them. Actually, the uh, biggest part of what is known as Jordan today, about half of that country, would belong to Israel. In fact, almost all of the northern section of Israel into Lebanon and parts of Syria, too, would have belonged to Israel. 
Uh, so it's quite interesting when he mentions that there about a hundred years ago through various agreements, mostly of their own convenience and really at reality of today. With the arrangements for the nation states decided upon on previous agreements between France, Britain, and other countries falling victim to revolution in places like Syria and Libya, as a result, there is a conceptual threat to the entire structure of the Middle East as we know it, uh, as we know them, said Gantz. There are several different groups struggling now, the radical Sunni jihadists who are uh, attacking countries like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Egypt. There is also Lebanon, which is now torn between different forces and the groups that seek to preserve Syria and Lebanon's connection with Iran. And of course, there is the Arab street, which is making itself heard loudly even in Egypt, where even President Assisi cannot ignore it. In addition to the military threats, Israel also had a, few, had a new field of battle, the cyber field where enemies were constantly on the attack. Once you knew how the players were and what their relative strengths and weaknesses were in the military sphere, things have changed drastically, Gantz said. Just a few years ago, no one could have guessed that the hackers could, imperial na na excuse me, could imperil national defense. But today, the arc of threat is very wide. While we are speaking here, hackers can destroy an Israeli bank. We are a witness to, to a very unstable geopolitical situation today, Gantz added. There is no reason to believe that what was and is will still be in another five or ten years. Now these words are very serious. What the uh, chief of staff there, the military uh, chief of staff, Benny Gantz, has, has brought out. And in light of the fact that the uh, Russian uh, defense minister and and his statements there, uh, Sergei uh, Soyhu, is saying that they're beefing up their own military as well. It's obvious that what is about to take place is something that I actually heard uh, Brother Paul Begley the other day mention on his own news broadcast about the ten nations or the ten regions of the world. And I sent, uh, made a little comment on Brother Paul's video there. That was something me and my wife had been working on ourselves. We just have not been quite ready to bring this out publicly yet, but it's public everywhere as it is, about the 10 regions of the world. And this is something that's been going on since 1968, when, the, when there was a group form called the Club of Rome. And yes, it is a Vatican-based organization, but this Club of Rome is the one that actually introduced the ten regions that the world could be divided up into, or ten sectors, you might say. And this is a goal that is realistic in their minds. The people that make up this, uh, this group are former world leaders, former uh, heads of states, scientists, philosophers, political analysts. Everything you can imagine forms this group up. And even the United Nations has gone further and have updated the map in 2006, something you're seeing on the screen now, of the 10 regions of the world that the way it would be divided up. And it's very much a real, it's a real situation that's going to happen. Now, not only are they calling these areas uh, 10 sectors, they're also calling these areas 10 kingdoms. And they're They've already planned, now this is the, the Club of Rome, you can look them up on the internet, they're easy to find, I think that's even their website is clubofrome.org or something of that nature there. You can find them in Wikipedia, they'll tell you about the members, uh, how they were established, it's easy to look this group up, uh, but most people do not know that this is a Vatican controlled group, but clearly they, they, they've already, uh, they, there's also been uh, decided on who would be the ten kings for the Club of Rome? Now, this here is speculation. We can't say for sure exactly does this represent Daniel's vision or is it another ten kingdoms or whatever. But it is kind of ironic that this Club of Rome, back as far back as the late 60s and early or mid 70s, I think it was in 1976, if I remember right, that actually came up with dividing up the world into ten sectors. The map has changed somewhat over the years and was updated in 2006 by the United Nations. If you look at the map closely, though, what's interesting is Russia. 
Russia ends up taking back the former Soviet states. You see all of them in there, including Ukraine, what's being fought over today. You see uh, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, of course, Belarus is still part of that union there. You see uh, Romania, Poland, all of those going back in there. In Europe being a much smaller region. The United States is then uh, brought together with Canada and Greenland. And even, I think it was updated, that they would make Mexico a part of the North, uh, the North trade area as well. And whereas the original map had Mexico uh, established with uh, the South America instead. But that's been somewhat altered as time has gone on. But it's ironic that they're calling those ten kingdoms. And they've even said they would have ten princes over them or ten kings is what they would appoint to the people over these provinces as, as time goes on. Now, the only way, from other, other bits and pieces of sources that we've been able to put together about this, is that the only way to be able to bring these ten sectors up is for there to be an unrest. There's got to be problems in order to bring certain nations into an agreement of doing this, to where the nations will think it is the only way to, to solve the problem around the world. This is why we're seeing so much unrest throughout the Middle East, throughout now with Russia and, and the Ukraine, and of course it could easily spill over into other nations. Uh, in fact, Japan at one point was set aside as an area of its own because they were not cooperative in what the plan was. It's one of the reasons why Russia actually declared that they were the ones that created the tidal wave that came in and killed many people in Japan. That's a news article we covered not too long ago. We actually caught the clip of that and posted for you the, the very Russian man claiming this very thing. So, and he was a head, a head diplomat in Russia that stated that, you know, and he, or they, they questioned him and he doesn't deny it. He says, but we can do what we want when we want. So there's supposed to be more uh, instability. And this may be one of the reasons why there'll be a confrontation directly against the United States. Could it be militarily? Could it be both military and economic? Naturally, if a military confrontation were to hit the shores of America, economically, it would also take a tremendous beating. So naturally, as we see the unrest happening around the world, it is pretty obvious that this is one way that they can get the world communities to accept a new world order, a new 10 uh, ten political uh, uh, kingdoms set up, regions as they call it as well. They call it regions as well as kingdoms. And those regions or those kingdoms will have ten kings. Could this be part of the biblical prophecy being fulfilled in Daniel's vision? Well, only time will tell. I'm Stephen Benoon with Trey